So before we talk about what you need for the course, let me be clear that this is not an excuse for you to buy gear. There's a very good chance that you have some of, if not all of the things you need to record your verses already, but let's go over exactly what that looks like. First things first, you need a computer. Odds are, if you have a computer that's from the past couple of years, it's probably good enough to do basic recording over a two track instrumental. You can always check out the minimum specs for live. I'm gonna link to those. As a general rule of thumb, I think anything above eight gigs of RAM should be okay. For context, we'll be recording all of the vocals in this course using a MacBook Air M1 with 16 gigs of RAM. Another thing you're gonna need is an audio interface, and this is pretty important. Luckily, they're cheaper and they're better quality than they've ever been. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a good audio interface for recording or a decent one for recording. The main thing I want you to look out for if you have to buy a new one is direct monitoring, clean inputs, and phantom power. Some of my favorite brands include Focusrite. I have a Focusrite for some of my bigger projects. Apogee, I'm using an Apogee Duet for this recording and I use that primarily for my vocal recording. I like UA interfaces a lot, and I like the new SSL interfaces a lot too. They all come in different budgets and price ranges. Again, if you have a decent interface now, this is not a reason to go buy another one. Those are some that I like when it comes down to looking for new options for an interface. Now you're also gonna need a microphone, obviously. Um, if you have one already, use the one that you have for this course. If you don't, I've linked to a guide that might get you in the right direction. I'm using the Slate Digital M1 for the course. It's a microphone that emulates a lot of the top tier studio mics for vocal recording without you spending too much money on it. You also need a pop filter and some cables. Um, I'm not gonna be using a pop filter for the recordings here just because I wanna be able to see you a bit better. But when you're doing your own vocal recording, instead of using a windscreen like I'm using on this mic, get yourself a pop filter. It'll stop those hard P sounds from bleeding into your recordings and also get yourself a couple of microphone cables. If you have only one cable, you don't have enough. You want at least two pairs of microphone cables because when you find out your mic cable eventually is broken, you're gonna be in the middle of recording. Nobody finds out that their mic cable is broken when they're not recording. So when you're in that moment and when it happens, you wanna have a backup available and ready to go. You don't wanna to have to go to the store and get a new one or order a new one and then have that whole session go to waste. So have at least two mic cables, always have backup USB cables, all of that good stuff. And finally, you're also gonna need a pair of headphones. These are the DT770s and I'm just a fan of them because I'm used to them. Um, the main thing you want to look out for are headphones that are over the ear that don't bleed too much into your microphone. That doesn't have to be super expensive. You probably have an over the ear pair of headphones you can use now. And as long as you don't turn up your volume too much, that should be enough to prevent it from bleeding into your microphone and making things harder to mix. So let's talk about software. The main thing you're going to need is a copy of Ableton Live. And if you don't have a version of Live already, you can actually get a version of Live Lite for very, very cheap. It comes bundled with a lot of pieces of hardware, but if for whatever reason it didn't come when you bought your interface or your microphone, there's a really cool sampler, a software sampler app for phones called Koala Sampler. I use it when I'm making beats. And one of the cool things about it is that it comes with a license for Live Lite. And the app itself is only a couple of bucks. So you can get this cool app and even if you never use it, it's enough to get you an access to live light and that lets you record, export. You can do a whole full session without breaking the bank on Ableton Live. I will link to Koala Sampler and if you're into starting to make beats, it's a great way to start too. So it's really a two for one win. The only other piece of software I'd recommend is some type of BPM detection software. Um, there's a lot of free apps available. You can get them for your phone, for your computer. Also, if you are a fan of DJing, you can get a piece of DJ software and that'll be able to read your BPM too. Um, the DJ app, I believe, has a free version that you can use. You drag in your beat and that'll give you your tempo. I use Serato, same deal. Whenever I get an instrumental and I don't know the tempo to it, I drag it into Serato, that gives me my tempo, and then I set my session to that tempo going forward. The other thing you're gonna need, beats. Hopefully you have your own, but I've set up a playlist for everyone who is taking this course to use for practicing, writing songs, free of charge.